the animals. One, marmalade. A boy was sent by his mother to get some marmalade at the local grocery. He couldn't find any marmalade with his face on it, so he complained to the manager. Why don't you sell any marmalade with my face? The manager replied that the marmalade they had in stock did not come with faces on its jars. Only one brand featured any kind of illustration of orange trees. The boy didn't like this answer and stormed out. Many years later, he'd saved enough money to start his own marmalade business. He sold grapefruit, lime, and blood orange. Every jar had his face on the label. Because the jar sold so well, he took his face as evidence that its absence on other marmalade brands made them deficient. Eventually, the boy had become so successful that he owned all the marmalade in the city. Every jar label had his face on it. One day, a metal vole walked into his factory and asked for a meeting. The vole demanded to know why there were no images of vermin on the jars of marmalade the boy produced. The boy said, As long as I live, there will never be a vole or any other vermin on my marmalade. 2. Masks Some people say there are no such things as masks. Whenever you think you are putting on a mask, you are really putting on a mirror. You are one kind of magnetic, and masks another kind. A mask is like one of the Old Testament's apocryphal books. You may look through eye holes and see a dragon, but you are unable to slay it. Some say masks are like boulders on an incredibly steep hill. Try as you might, you will never roll them to the top. Remember the mother grizzly who watched worriedly from the summit as her cub slipped from the snowy edge when it tried to climb? Some others say it is their duty to strip masks from others' faces, or that they should crusade against all masks, trampling them at first sight. The topic of masks is incendiary, but it wasn't always so. When everyone looked the same, masks were freely worn without consequence. That entire period of mask wearing was marital and innocent, except for the mask maker. Her hands were always turbulent. 3. Bearded Dragon I bought a bearded dragon thinking he spoke bearded dragonese. The untouched crickets and mealworms told me otherwise. We say what we mean to say, not what we mean. I took him back for an exchange. Reason, the shopkeeper asked. Faulty programming, I said. He gave me a dense ball of twine. That should fix it, he said. Over time, the bearded dragon unraveled the ball with his little tongue. Twine was puzzled over the terrarium. The ball ceased to speak. I bought another ball and another after that. The entire terrarium was filled to the brim with failed twine. Below that ocean of clarity, the bearded dragon pressed against glass, moving his scaly mouth, signaling an unending need for more. 4. Elegy Alone in a room with a bat, I let out a last agonal gasp. Holy ghost, I lived always afraid of thorn and the venom sack. Even with your mouth fully effaced, I refuse to kiss. Velveteen wings flap and direct me to a finalizing word. I'll go alone. No charm, no slicker. Not even the burr fastened to us in a hand-me-down bassinet. Holy stroke, give me time to massage the bitter failures of my historical arc into something near a key. Will you accept pleading? Or will only regret open the door? 5. Mimesis Mimicry is a form of theft. Complete mimicry is obliteration. When you lease a sloop, you inhabit the form of someone who does not need to lease a sloop. When you commit the crime of pouring water into a tin throat, so that a migrant might slake a little of her thirst, you do not become a refugee, but inhabit the truth of refuge. 
In my house, I've hung a hunter's landscape at dusk, plunging white wings, the sun's dim rind in retreat. Nothing there is real except the failure of the artist to call into this world what he'd witnessed anchored to a flayed ranch. My father left a macaw behind, known as an expert mimic. She mimics the sound of diazepam, the sound of a brass buckle scraping zinc rivets. It is hard to say whether when her melody is freely released she continues to exist, or whether she becomes what she mimics, identity being so tangled with the throat. In the kitchen, a carving knife scores an onion on butcher board. Thunder echoes in the wash tub. Augustine wrote an identical constellation 1,600 years ago. He was tired and his wrists ached from the horsehair whip he'd use as ink in moments of terrible regret. Maybe I read about his anguish in a suicidal college course and forgot. Maybe I raced too hard towards pretend radiance. According to some theologians, the world is incapable of salvage. At its brightest, only an asymptote to a perfect slither of ice or a circle. When the sundew unfurls its many glazed mallets, it counterfeits the aim of quenching. When I invite lilies into the house, I clear my lungs for worship. Nepenthe exacts a heavy price for faithful adherence to natural law. There was a time when I wanted to become silhouette of the man who made me. There was a time when I wanted to expel his shadow from my inventory. He too suffered a schism. When he was young, he fed the chickens so much seed they faltered like unbalanced tops. His father warned him that he was killing his inheritance, but he knew the price of stripping history from the full slab of animal. <laughs>